Ms. Lorena Roy is economist for her presentation on production and trade subsidies affecting the cotton industry. Thank you, Chair, for this opportunity to present a summary of the government support to the cotton industry report. I would like to start my presentation by saying that the ICIC Secretariat followed the same procedure implemented in previous years to update the government measures report. However, in addition to that, the Secretariat also contacted several countries to discuss the programs they have implemented to support cotton industry. These interactions led us to have a broader understanding of the programs. The ICAC Secretariat was able to include additional information for some of the countries that will be reflected in the Government Measures Report. This report is available on the ICAC website in three different languages, including Spanish, English, and French. It is also worth mentioning that most of the data comes from governments. However, if information was not given by a particular country, then open source data was used to complete calculation and estimates. Our assessment of government subsidies for cotton includes different programs. Each of these support programs have different provisions and effects on the cotton sector. The information that is being presented today refers to the 2021 crop year. It is important to know that several countries have in place minimum support price mechanisms, but in some countries, these systems were not operational as domestic prices were above the MSP. As you all may know, the ICIC Secretariat began reporting on government measures in cotton since 1997-98. The Secretariat has stated that there is a strong negative correlation between subsidies and cotton prices. So in years when prices are high, subsidies tend to decline, and in years when prices are low, subsidies tend to increase. This correlation has remained fairly consistent during the past several seasons. In 2019-20, the COVID-19 pandemic negatively affected cotton demand, which in turn led, led to drop in cotton prices. The Cutlook A index declined to 71.3 cents per pound, while subsidies increased significantly. However, in 2020, 21, the development and release of multiple vaccines against COVID-19, coupled with the lifting of lockdown restrictions and quarantine measures, helped the economy to get back on track, increasing the demand for commodities and supporting higher cotton prices. The Cotlook A index averaged almost 85 cents per pound, up by 19% from the previous season and the second highest average in the past seven years. The ICAC Secretariat has estimated that subsidies to the cotton sector reach a total of $6.95 billion in the 2021 crop year, an 18% decrease from the $8.5 billion observed in 2019-20. The share of world cotton production receiving direct government assistance slightly decreased from 70% in 1920 to 69% in 2021. The marginal drop can be explained by the combination of two factors, the increase in cotton prices and the decrease in, of cotton production. As a reference, in 24 years of analysis, the lowest level of world cotton production under assistance was observed in 2016-2017, with a total share of 44%. And the highest level was recorded in 2008-2009, with a share of 83%. A very detailed information on how government support programs work can be found in the final government measures report. 
So let me talk about the different programs that countries have in place to support content production. The Chinese government uses different tools. One of these tools is the, CV, is the reserve system, which essentially operates like a massive warehousing program. China releases cotton to the market from the reserve when there is a shortage of cotton. It also buys cotton from the reserves when there is an oversupply. So what these actions do is to help to stabilize domestic cotton prices. Starting in 2014-15, the Chinese government has been providing a target price-based system, which is mainly a direct subsidy payment to cotton producers in the Xinjiang region. The subsidy is based on the difference between the target price set for the season and the average market price. In March of last year, the Chinese government announced the extension of the target price-based subsidy for three more years. It is important noticing that the target price has remained unchanged since 2016-2017 at 18,600 yuan per ton. The Chinese government also provides a direct subsidy to farmers in other provinces. However, the target price is lower it is approximately 11% of the target price given to farmers in Xinjiang. Another tool used by China to support its cotton sector is border protection through the implementation of import quotas. The objective of these quotas is to limit the access that Chinese mills may or may not have to international market. So basically, China supports cotton production by controlling cotton import volumes and values and by applying border protection measures based on quotas and sliding scale duties. The Chinese government also provides a subsidy to cotton farmers for using high quality seeds and for transportation of the cotton from the Xinjiang region where most of the cotton is produced to mills in eastern and southern China, where most of the Chinese textile industry is located. The Chinese government also provides assistance to cotton farmers through two additional programs. The Agriculture Insurance Support Policy, which is a premium subsidy in crop insurance, including cotton, and the Agriculture Machinery Purchase Subsidy Policy. However, the total value of these two programs linked to cotton is unknown. The total sum of these programs provided to producers in China is estimated at $3.9 billion in 2021. In the United States, the government provides support to cotton producers through several programs. Amongst those programs are the Cotton Insurance Premium Subsidy. This tool protects producers against crop yield and revenue losses. The Tax Insurance Program is also another tool that the United States uses to support farmers. Tax provides Avalon cotton producers with premium subsidy, subsidies on the purchase of insurance policies that cover losses below the level generally covered by standard crop insurance policies. Another program is the Extra Long Staple Competitiveness Program, which provides a payment to exporters and domestic users of U.S. Pima cotton under certain conditions. The marketing assistance loans and the loan deficient payments are marketing tools available to producers during harvest. The Marketing Assistance Loans program allows the producer to delay the sale of the cotton until better market conditions emerge. Another tool used by the U.S. to help farmers is the Agriculture Risk Coverage, or ARC, and the Price Loss Coverage, also known as PLC programs. However, it is important to note 
that the ARC and the PLC payments are based on historical data rather than current plant and aid area. So both of these programs provide income support to farmers whether or not they are producing cotton. The sum of all type of support programs tied to planted cotton that are provided to U.S. producers was $625 million in 2021, while PLC and ARC payments reached a total of $454 million. Greece and Spain are the major cotton producers in the European Union. Subsidies provided to cotton farmers in Greece and Spain are based on three variables, a maximum area, seed cotton yields, and a reference payment per hectare. One important thing to note here is that if the cotton area in Spain or Greece exceeds the maximum base area in a given year, then the support per hectare is reduced proportionally. In 2021, the amount of direct subsidy to production in Greece and Spain reached a total of $297 million. In Turkey, the government pays a premium to cotton farmers per kilogram of seed cotton produced. In this year's report, the ICAC Secretariat also included two additional benefits that the Turkish government has been providing to cotton farmers. Those additional benefits are fuel and fertilizers subsidies. The Secretariat estimates that total subsidies provided to cotton producers in Turkey was $419 million in 2021. The government of India provides several programs to support cotton farmers. The minimum support price or MSP system becomes operational during seasons when domestic prices are below the MSP. Cotton is not the only crop benefiting from this system. In fact, the government of India fixes MSP for 22 crops, including rice, maize, sunflower, wheat, barley, jute, and copra, amongst others. I must also point out that in mid-November, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs in India approved a total of 174 billion rupees, equivalent to about 2.4 billion US dollars to reimburse the losses that the Cotton Corporation of India incurred due to the MSP procurement between marketing years 2014-15 and 2021. At this point, it is unclear how losses calculations were made or what is the corresponding amount of, of subsidies for each season. The ICSC Secretariat will update the final, final government measures report once we get more clarity on this matter. The government of India also provides a fertilizer subsidy to cotton farmers. Despite the ICSC Secretariat has been mentioning this subsidy in previous report, this is the first time that we provide an estimate of the total subsidy amount under this program that goes to the cotton sector. We are also aware of some other programs implemented by the government of India including the crop insurance subsidy. Unfortunately, not information on this program is publicly available and benefits are difficult to quantify. I would like to point out that we will continue to improve our sources of data and put all our efforts to collect and inform about these programs. Several countries in West Africa provide subsidies for supporting farm gate prices and cotton inputs, especially for fertilizers, pesticides, and seeds for sowing. Among those countries are Mali, Burkina Faso, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, and Chad. It is estimated that together, these five countries provided a total support of $112 million to cotton farmers 
in the 2021 season. I would like to end my presentation by saying that the ICSC Secretariat makes every effort to report on the impact of all government measures when they are quantifiable. We also encourage all countries to provide data and comments to enhance the accuracy of the report. Thank you very much.